Well, this is an interesting development. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Eternal Darkness. We have a note from Edward. I suppose this was hidden within some of the pages of the Tome of Eternal Darkness. Because we didn't have this earlier. Interesting. And we were gifted this after we have just finished reading about Paul Luther. Let's go ahead and read the note now. And then we'll go ahead and do a summary of what we have just witnessed as we explore the other parts of the house and figure out where the next tome fragment is located. The note reads, My dearest Alex, I'm glad that you have followed my paper trail thus far. I knew I could depend on you. This will be the hardest part of your journey. Look for the 88 keys to continue your journey into the past. Your loving grandfather, Edward. As we can see from this pay, uh, screen as well, our sanity is quite low, all things considered. But I think it would be fun to leave it a little low, so we have a chance to have more insane stuff happen to us. As we walk around the house and look for 88 keys. Now, I don't think there's actually 88 keys that we have to find. Oh. There is 88 keys. But not quite the way I originally thought when I read that sentence. Okay. Yeah. We need to find 88 keys. But thankfully, they're all located in a singular place. In the last episode... Alex had finished reading about Paul Luther, a Franciscan monk who had gone to, uh, I'm going to mispronounce it, the Oublier Cathedral, which turned out to be built around the church that we had seen Anthony running around in, in his attempt to warn Charlemagne de Franc of the attempt on his life. Sorry, we're being attacked by zombies. <laughs> These ones aren't being damaged by the spell shield. I'm guessing that they weren't really there. Although, we're going to have a small departure from our normal summary at this point. Since if those are actually there in some capacity, then we should probably grab the Heart of Mantarok rather than leave it in the shelves here for fear of them actually finding it and taking it. Alice discovers a pulp novel written by one Dr. Enwin Lindsay amongst the books on the shelf. This is where the Tome of Eternal Darkness indicated that something of value was hidden behind this book. With the book removed, a secret cache is revealed. Inside is a heart of Mantarok, encased in glass to protect the world from its corrosive energies. It's, wait, but the bottom of it's not glass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess only the sides and top have to be protected from the energies, and the bottom of it does not. Back to the summary. Paul Luther discovered that this cathedral and the Hand of Jude he had gone to look at were both facades the hand of jude did not actually exist at all 
and the cathedral did not house anyone of the Catholic religion. <laughs> but cultists working for Uliath, pretending... Uh-oh. Pretending to work for the Inquisition, nonetheless. And the Inquisition provided them with decent cover as well. Enter when Paul discovered the corpse of another Franciscan, I think it, that's who it was, Andrew, within the pews, within the main cathedral area, he was accused, Paul, of ha potentially having committed the crime. I still don't know how to interact with the telescope. We seem to be trapped in here as well, guys. This is kind of cool in a way. I don't think the keys we need, though, are located in this area. Paul was rescued from his incarceration by the curator of the museum and met with him, where they discussed what could possibly be done. The curator mentioned running, but Paul wanted to put an end to the corruption occurring within the cathedral. <laughs> and promised instead to attempt to do exactly that. He would adventure through the cathedral, and in his explorations, discovered a five-circled rune parchment. This was after he was brought to the Tome of Eternal Darkness's chamber, and was forced to claim the book. A bit odd that he would he would actually touch it in my opinion given that he is a Franciscan monk and the book is undoubtedly evil at the very least it's paganistic but he took it and then was gifted with all the knowledge therein he ended up finding Anthony's corpse as well, which was set to be a guard against one of the gems he needed to proceed downwards into a different area of the cathedral. After engaging it in combat, he prayed for Anthony's soul, which seemed to deliver him from this realm and bring him to the next. Thank God, literally, in this instance. And we'll continue the summary after we take a look at the 88 keys. <laughs> Seeing the piano stirred up distant recollections of Paul Luther's story in Alex's mind. The echoes of those notes within the cathedral echo also within her own consciousness. Her hands are drawn to the keys, almost of their own accord. Oh, they actually tell you what the keys are. Okay. I actually ha I still have it written down from when I had played this a few days ago. A chapter page is hidden inside the piano. I'm guessing that it's not like magically locked. But perhaps the page doesn't reveal itself, unless you play that song. Who are you? I am your lord and conqueror. What manner of forsaken being are you? So... You can see me in my true form. You are a gifted man. Take this one and use him as the foundation for the pillar. He is special. 
and should be given a special place among the suffering. Enter my heart. A hint that I think the next page we read might be taking place in the more distant past based upon the weaponry I saw those people wielding. Anyway, Paul was able to gain access to a five circle spell slot, uh, or mm, I don't know the way to describe it. Knowledge of how to cast more powerful spells. Now we can cast ones that require five, that use five slots instead of three, filling the extra slots with Pargon runes, which mean power. He was able to traverse through the cathedral and defeat all of the creatures summoned to stop him from proceeding onward. Although it seemed, in a way, that he was destined to succeed. And as if Pius Augustus, who would turn out to be the head bishop of the cathedral, or at least in charge of the... pretending to be in charge of the Inquisition therein, had known he would reach the final chamber, within which was that strange, incredibly powerful guardian set to the task of protecting the rune, uh, the artifact of Zeltoth from being reached. Paul, poor Paul Luther had no chance against the creature. Pius said that he would deal with Paul as he met with the giant monstrosity and Paul in that final chamber. The Guardian then, however, lifted one of its legs and just crushed Paul into a pile of flesh and bone. It then told Pius that since it was summoned to protect that relic, it will continue to do so. We learned as well that the artifact, or rather the Hand of Jude, never existed in the first place, and that it was most likely lied about in order to draw the faithful to that cathedral for some nefarious purpose. I cannot pick up that book. It looks like we should be able to. We learned, or Alex has now learned, how to cast a five-point spell. And as you can see, circling her, she's learned the shield spell. I think this is where we first had learned it during uh, Paul's adventure. The shield spell will absorb damage, protecting Alex from suffering any, as long as there are these circling orbs to protect her. I don't think they... I thought they ran out over time. But it looks like that's not actually the case. And that's it for the summary, everyone. We've just retrieved another tome page, so we're going to go back in and give it a read. I think we probably should also restore some of Alex's sanity, since she is a bit too insane to my liking at the moment. So, let's see, what's our current quick spells? I kind of like all those. Why don't we spell list, recover, cast. We'll make it a five point recovery for her as well. Since she's going to be losing more Sandy after she reads the tome page. Speaking of which, I guess we'll do that now, but let me put a little break here, everyone. I'll be right back. All right, everyone. Let's go ahead and read the page and see who, which unfortunate soul we're going to be reading about today. Much has been written about the exploits of conquerors. 
In the context of history, one man's champion is another man's nemesis, hero or murderer. Much has been written, but what has not is far more interesting. The Tome of Eternal Darkness mentions a Venetian artist and architect of the Renaissance named Roberto Bianchi. Roaming abroad to find inspiration, he was captured by a warlord expanding his empire. He forced Roberto to use his architectural and engineering skills to construct a monument to his greatness. To complete his task, he must survey the site. Survey the site quickly, dog, and maybe you'll live long enough to see the sacrament's construction. Did you think we would trust you, Bianchi? Even though you are graced with the generosity of our liege, you are still his prisoner. As I said, finish your work quickly and maybe we'll drag you out of this hole. Roberto must survey the ruins of this ancient temple. The rooms he must survey can be found on the map. Only when these areas have been inspected can the construction begin. I guess we're starting right here. The foundation for the monument has been constructed. But it has suffered some damage. The rest of the complex is unknown, and Roberto must discover if construction can continue. I wonder what's going to stop Roberto from lying about this and say it's safe to construct it. They're, they're going to kill him. <laughs> Why not lie? Well, then again, I guess he doesn't know if you're going to kill them. We don't know if we're going to kill him either. They might not do so, but based on the way he's being treated, I don't think it's looking good for him. And we only have a torch to start. Well, let's go ahead and head on in. They've apparently done quite a bit of work already in this area. Unless this is different than the other construction we found ourselves in initially. And they have some workers here as well, apparently. Can we talk with them? No, we cannot. Now, this should look familiar to us. This looks very much like the labyrinth that Pius Augustus had seen and Kareem fought his way through. And there doesn't seem to be anything in this room that we can examine. Let's take a look at our maps. It sounds like we ha might have a little bit of this filled out already. And we do, apparently. We can see the X's in at least two other chambers on this level. Oops, wrong, wrong way. That is really hard to see. Nothing on the green level, except a series of interconnected tunnels. And then... Down another floor, looks like we have two more rooms to look at, and a bottom floor. Interesting. Oh, and one even even lower than that. All right, well, let's get going. Oh, actually, let's look at Roberto's stat line as well. Pretty healthy hit point wise. Almost no magic to speak of. Average levels of sanity, so he's not going to be a spellcaster, or at least. Nowhere near as powerful as some of the other characters we had in that regard. Interesting that there's a monster down here. Roberto's not, e not able to even harm it. Oh, 
and that's just a dead end. He's rather girthy, so I'm going to assume he doesn't have a great deal of uh, stamina. I can hear another zombie walking about. At least I thought I could. Oh God! One of Roberto's fellow slaves lies dead. His wounds have attracted the attention of the beasts, for they have been gnawed upon, spilling his innards onto the dusty floor. Well, that's just a horrible thing to make the, the slaves do. Wouldn't that make you doubt everything that you've, you've known <laughs> about humankind? About the world you live in? If you walk down there and there's a zombie walking out around down there? That seems rather jarring. And we found some crossbow bolts, so I suppose we can hope to find one of those in the future. A makeshift ladder leads down into that hole. An old scythe. God, I hope I said that right. Lies discarded on a nearby ledge. Because we have a weapon that we, we can wield now. The torch was doing no damage to the blue monstrosity. Should Roberto try to survey this area? Yeah, might as well. We're not leaving until we do so. The structure around here shows signs of stress. It is far from sound. Perhaps with some reinforcement, it might be able to suit the requirements of the monument. This is a scythe. A curved Arabic... Oh, am I supposed to say it uh, Arabic or Arabic? We'll go with Arabic sword with a distinctive pummel. The scythe is the standard weapon of most Middle Eastern M armies. Actually, we'll keep using the torch. Maybe we can just avoid the monsters. A prison level, I'm guessing. Given the cutlasses here. So I can make out Zeltath zombies there, Chaturgas on the left here, and Mantrok straight ahead. A lever is situated near the gate. choice but to fight it. Bro doesn't look like the type who's learned how to fight. Or at least how to fight these things. Well, he does handle the weapon rather well. But I think until we find the tome, we should probably make body slashes to begin to take them off their heads. Two of them. We're gonna lose quite a bit of sanity here. But they don't see me? You would think, well, if his task was so important, they should have sent him down here with some assistance. Some guards. It's as if they don't care if he succeeds or not at his task.
interesting that there's friendly fire. The weapon's also one of the few that seem to stagger enemies. And that the zombies react that way indicate that, once again, they feel pain. Or shock of being struck. Our task was not to clear the enemy of hostiles, but to in just in investigate it. I don't even understand what purpose this little chamber ha had, unless these were guard rooms to the side. That normally there'd be people posted here to approve others, like a, a, a sentries, to allow folks to wander further into this s temple structure. But there's no chairs, tables, nothing down here for them to have anything to do. This is odd to me, the layout of this place. Oh, hello. More crossables? None of the other slaves are even interested in the weaponry that's lying around. Apparently not even the crossbow. But then again, I guess they're not, and no real... They don't... The guards wouldn't care about these slaves. Who cares if they have a crossbow? They can't get out unless the other guards help them out. They can have all the weapons they want down here. Not like they can use them against their uh, captors. Dust and rock falls from the roof through a fault in the stone. It is difficult for Roberto to access how sturdy the, the place is, but it needs a lot of reinforcement if it is to be built upon. A crossbow sits atop the ledge. Let's look at our map again. So we've investigated the three X's in these chambers. So it looks like that other, the other, there'll be another ladder in this room, which leads us to the other red room to the south of us, the lower portion of the map here, and then a far, another ladder or some means of descent will lead us far deeper into the structure. Cradled in what appears to be a leathery hand lies a mysterious book. It is bound in human skin, 
and intricately decorated with shrunken bones. It beckons and yearns to be possessed. Well, <laughs> it occurs to me that as someone who now has been gifted with the knowledge of what has come before and after him, Roberto likely realizes that he is not going to come to a happy end after picking up this book. The worker is surprised to see Roberto. He confesses to cowardice as he stayed behind while others ventured further into the complex. When the screams of the others echoed from the walls, he dared not move. Well, you don't have a weapon. And we couldn't even harm one of the... the blue zombies. We're a fantastic shot now. Which actually makes a bit of sense given all the knowledge we picked up. I wonder if the knowledge is just under the equivalent of reading the tome, or if a great amount of information, like how to fight, beyond just reading about it, but actually knowing what to do and how to do it, as if he had done it himself, is bestowed upon him. Okay. I don't hear any other trappers. A collapsed roof and scaffolding prevents Roberto from proceeding further down this corridor. We're likely to meet hostiles up above. On the off chance it might be correct, let's also enchant our crossbow a bit. Let me also quickly make sure that we have... Okay, damage field is to the right. Okay, we're gonna immediately enchant item. Actually, yeah, enchant item, cast this Zeltath. I see the winged monstrosity here with the tail behind it. And I see a zombie on the other side. Let's kill the zombie first. This one looks a little different. I'm not sure if this is a Ulioth one. I see the spell scroll down there. Wow! How many hits is this? This is taking like a good amount more damage than I thought it would take. Only 
only two bolts left besides the one we have loaded in the crossbow. We could probably have used the sword there, but I wasn't going to risk it. We got to get a little closer to the creature there. An abandoned library of sorts. A small collection of rotted, useless books lie amidst smash pottery and debris. At this point, Roberto must be thinking that this... There's no way this existed. Like, they didn't construct any of this. This must have been here before. And they're, I guess, looking to put something new... Supported by the weight of the existing ruins somewhere here. And hope that the corridors they tunneled... Did not weaken the structure. A tattered scroll of paper sits atop the dais, collecting dust, or dais. We can now cast summon zombie. You likely won't see me use it very often. Oh, you know what we could have done? Maybe we could have summoned a trapper and vanished that monster. I'll have to keep, I'll have to remember that's an option for us in the future. You won't see me using the summon zombie very often because like the other summon trapper, it drains sanity to try to control the zombie. I'd rather just deal with the monsters assuming I have a weapon uh, available to me. But we will need it to pass a test or two. Okay. I actually would love to be able to teleport one of a, a horror if it's possible so that I saw green energy so we will want Keturga to deal with a Zeltath horror so let's summon a then again maybe we want a Zeltath so I'm thinking about the trappers because I would like to just teleport this thing away assuming it doesn't have a rune in its chest and I think we have all the runes already, so I don't think we're going to likely have to have to kill it. So maybe we can... Maybe we can actually su yeah, summon a trapper and get rid of this thing. And by making it a Zeltath trapper, we likely it likely won't attack it. So let's give this a try. Dear Paratax Zeldon. Okay, or, or nothing will happen. <laughs> one more time. I, I want to try that one more time. Maybe I mess it up somehow. I don't think I did. Not enough energy. All right, then. Uh, well, that sucks. And we have to walk to recover some of our magic. Let's try it one... Nope. Okay, I think it stomped forward, so we're going to have to do... We're going to have to... Uh, Oh god, alright, so this was a mistake. So spell list, enchant item, cast five, Turturga on the safe. Well, I'm going to heal some of my sanity now as well. Or, or not. Tim, you gotta charge. Maybe we can just avoid it. Another worker's corpse. This time slashed from behind as he ran from his attacker, hoping for escape. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Anymore. Don't be so weak, Alex. 
You have a stronger mind than this. I didn't bring up a weakling. Not a scared wretch of a girl. You kept all this from me. You kept me alone. You shared nothing with me. I couldn't. I could never give you the burden. I just wanted you to grow up. To grow up and leave me alone. Why couldn't you have been killed with your parents? This can't be happening! Good God, Grandpa! What the hell was that? <laughs> Grandpa is really effing mean. Alright, 846. Tim, we can do that again. Ravaged corpses litter the room. Their flesh has been devoured in places, and decomposition has already set in. We didn't need to investigate anything in that. Okay, we did not need anything in that corridor. I think I left some crossbow bolts down there. But thankfully, I didn't need to use any of them there either, so. Because I don't really care. Ravage. Alright, we already read that. Okay, so. We're not going to be able to proceed down there, it would seem, until we figure out how to open that gate. It looks like when that zombie stepped on that pressure plate, it shut the gate. Well, let's walk through this door then, if we're allowed to. No oh god! <laughs> Oh, that was him randomly swinging. Okay, um... Interesting that... These have quite a size difference on them. One looked like it was a giant. us down. I think... Okay. That other passageway leads down to this area. Hmm. We will have to go down there. But let's go for these other two X's first. Oh! How on earth did you make it past the zombies? And your, and your friend? I can't talk with any of them, unfortunately. Although crumbling in places, the structure of this area could be braced to provide enough of a foundation for the monument. I like the idea of Roberto's tack. Oh, God! That's the thanks I get? Well, they can stay in there, then. <laughs> 
Once again, I don't need- I don't think I need to kill them. And Roberto isn't the best suited to fighting them, so they- those creatures can stay in there. They're probably all bone thieves as well. Oh. Oh no, the door's locked, though. So we may need a key. So we might have to kill some of these people. Well, the only thing I can think of in order to open this gate then and potentially find a key down there would be to summon a zombie and send it into that little room to open that gate. So let's do that. As for whose zombie we summon, I don't think it matters much. After a zombie has been summoned, press A to attack enemies. Attacks can be targeted using R. Attack an enemy's head to perform a gnaw attack. Release, uh, press this to release control of the zombie. Oh, we don't ever want to release control of it. I think. It sounds, zombies can open doors but not pick up items. Oh, they can examine the floor too. A pressure sensitive mechanism has been constructed into the floor. That is a very nameless one way of making progress. You don't get to go forward unless someone sacrifices themselves. Oh man. Okay, so let's enchant item. Cast this Uliath on our crossbow. I just realized that this mist is red. The last mist we saw was blue. So I'm guessing this tells me what type of... I don't know what they're called. The winged horrors are. Okay, there was no really easy way for me to get past it. So, we'll take the free recovery here, I think, right? What do we need? Sanity restored. So, we want the green one. Oh, it was green, Tim, and you didn't even take it. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Purple just leads me out. This will give us back our sanity. Oh, interesting. We can't cast spells here. So we can't we can't do any other recoveries. I guess I don't need to kill you. I just need to make sure you can't hurt me. Maybe we can get Cassie's. We're getting tired. Oh, God. That's terrifying. That one's got legs, uh, which makes it look more a great deal more monstrous. We have to run past it.
probably don't need to kill it, but I'm going to. I'm going to come back this way. Okay, I need to reload, and I also want the spell on this. Remember that this type will be regenerating. I can only really afford one more bolt. We have no more bolts. No, we have bolts, but I didn't I wasn't able to reload. Alright then. I really want this destroyed. I love how it looks like death. The, uh, it looks like a scythe raised behind it, and it's like a skull with a, a cloak. It looks amazing. And the mist fades from red back to, stand to standard mist. <laughs> well, we got one bolt left. Might as well put it in the crossbow. Let's go ahead and use a recovery. game. We haven't saved it since I entered this chapter. Alright. Let's move, push on. Got about another 10 minutes, everyone, so this is also going to have to probably be a, all these missions are probably going to be a multi-parter from now on. We, actually, let's do this one room, and then we'll call it quits then. But I think this might be Venture no further, or be struck down where you stand. Who? What? I am the guardian of this temple, the Forbidden City. None shall enter except the Chosen. Speak. <laughs> you are the Chosen. For many years I have tested those who came here, and all have failed. You are unaffected by the power I wield, and thus must surely be the Chosen. I? Once I was as you were, confused and without answers, yet they came in time. Now my duty is complete. I can finally rest. My sacrifice was not in vain. I have no choice but to pick this up. The game won't let me leave it here. Roberto can feel the acidic touch of the artifact's magic reaching towards him. Using a shred of cloth from his robes to shield his hands, he retrieves the hovering artifact. The room appears to be it The room appears to be an incredibly ancient shrine to the ancients, as noted in the Tome of Eternal Darkness. Could this be what Roberto's captor seeks to preserve with his monument?
All right, everyone, and I guess we'll stop here. A few quick statements before we go, though. I don't really understand Kareem's logic there. We could have just been extremely uh, protected against Kareem's blade. Chaturga is not the god who can withstand Ulioth. Ulioth beats Chaturga in the rock, paper, scissors uh, that the ancients have set up for themselves, or that is uh, that they uh, are bound by. So I don't actually understand what what use this artifact is to us. Unless it's just to stop anyone else from acquiring it, potentially drawing on Chaturga's power in a similar fashion to how Pius drew on Uliath's, while uh, Pius is dealing with, or his forces are dealing with Alex, maybe this also needs to get to the Gathering of Light to prevent anyone else from, ha at, at the same time that Pius tries to bring Uliath in for bringing in Chaturga. This also might hint that Roberto gets to live, as he might be able to escape with this artifact. Or maybe there's enough power in it to give him the strength he needs to withstand whatever is about to happen to him and see him escape with it at, at some point. I do like that Roberto didn't have a chance to defeat Kareem, uh, and he just, like, uh, panicked when Kareem swung at him. I think that's a very nice way to do that encounter, as opposed to fighting him like we did with Paul Luther and Alexander. Is that, is that right? I think they got the name right there. Yeah, I'm, I, I like this very much. Interesting that there's been multiple people who have arrived here, too, over the years. I thought that the only way even Pius found this place was because the gods, the ancients, reached out to him. But it's not like we can't, like, we walked here. Although we did, well, we did have the Tome's assistance to get this far. We would not have probably have, we would have been driven insane had we not been able to recover our sanity at least a little bit here. And have been able to enchant our weapons to help us fight some of these zombies. But other people can still walk to this location, assuming it's exposed to the outside world. Which it wasn't when Pius found this location to start. Buried under all the sand out here in the desert in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. Alright, well I'm beginning to babble. So let's stop here. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.